Hey everyone, my name is Artindi, and joining me for these 10 tips is fellow YouTuber and Godot Game Engine tutorial maker, Game Endeavor. Say hello, my dude. Howdy everyone, I am Game Endeavor, and now you know me too. Doo -doo 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 -doo. These 10 tips all have to do with the animation player node, a node that allows you to animate things in the engine. Keep in mind though, these are just tips for using the animation player node, not a full tutorial. I'm sure there are full tutorials out there, and if you'd like, Game Endeavor has a video on making a run cycle animation, which is where I learned how to use this node. I will have a link to that in the description. And in the meantime, when you have the animation player selected, you will see some new tools in the toolbar. The first three are attributes, location, rotation, and scale. Depending on which of these you have toggled on, when you click on this little key button, a keyframe of the node you wish to animate will be added to your animation at the location of this little blue bar here, not sure what to call it. The car thingy will auto add keyframes as you move the blue bar and the node you wish to animate. The animation player's timeline is in seconds, with one tenth of a second being the default step. This is fine if like me you haphazardly throw some sprites together, flail them about and hope that it passes as animation, but proper animators might like to know that you can change this to animate to frames per second for a more standard animation timeline. By default, that blue sliding bar thing will snap to every 0.1 seconds on the animation track. You can change the snapping value here, as well as turn off snapping with this toggle button, which is conveniently named Snap, and if you do, you can play your animation in slow motion by sliding the bar up and down the tracks. For those who care, this is called scrubbing, and it can make it easy to fix little errors or just to see your animation a little bit better. You can change the easing of your animations by selecting your keyframes drag selecting if you want to select multiple frames, and editing the easing in the inspector. Right clicking will allow you to set the type of easing that you want, and doing this modifies how the easing is applied when left click dragging to adjust the easing value. You can add some unique tracks by clicking on um, add track, including a track that will let you call methods in your scripts, and one that will let you play sounds at key moments in your animations. If you're using a cutout style of animation, then you can blend animations together so that changing animations isn't so sudden and jarring, giving your animations a more smooth feeling. Keep rotations in mind, however, as they can be a little tricky, often rotating opposite of how you might desire. It took me a while to find it, but I knew it had to be here. This little button will autoplay the animation as soon as it loads in the game. This is great for if you don't want to start the animation through scripts or whatever other reason you might have. I'm sure there's other good reasons. I'm mostly here just to show you where it is, you know, kind of, it's kind of easy to miss. You can queue multiple animations to be played sequentially via the queue method. This is useful if you want to start one animation and then transition to another after it's done. For example, if you want to flash the player to indicate that they've been damaged, but then transition to a blinking animation that is looped during their invulnerability, and then stop the via timer. You can make your animations play over and over again by toggling this animation looping button. However, your animations will animate their way back to their starting keyframes each time they loop. This can be good for some things, but if you want your animations to keep their position at the last keyframe on the track, you can click on this drop down and select clamp loop interpolate rather than wrap loop interpolate. By now, you may have noticed that animating properties in Godot is done smoothly. Most of the time, you're going to want to gradually transition from one value to the next, but this may not always be the case. For example, if you want to change the region area on a sprite atlas. You can do this by changing the update rate from continuous to discrete. Continuous will update the value on every frame, interpolating between the two keyframes, while discrete will only update the value once per keyframe. Hopefully you found these 10 tips helpful. And just so you know, during this collaboration, we made another 10 tips videos for Game Endeavor's channel, where we gave 10 tips for better game feel. It was released at the same time as this video, so here's a link on the end screen. Head over there and check out his video and his channel. Big thanks to Game Endeavor for joining me, and thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day.